Hey everyone, I'm gonna talk about where Payload's going over the next six months or so. It's been a crazy couple months for us. Ever since we launched 2.0, we have just about doubled every single metric and it's been a lot to keep up with. There are many things in flight, but I am incredibly excited about the future of where we're gonna take Payload. And I'm gonna go through it today. Um, before I do that, I wanna just take a second and talk a little bit about where we are now and what we're gonna be paying special attention to over the next three months as we build out new features. And the first thing is bugs and issues. If you've been around for a while, you probably noticed that the payload team absolutely sprints through issues, open issues on GitHub on Mondays. We call that bug fixing Mondays. We just go hard all day. Um, and that's our huge priority right now. We're not working on new features right now. Instead, we're just working on stability, fixing issues, concentrating on what we have, making sure that everyone's having a positive experience, making sure things are stable. And we're gonna keep doing that for the next probably month straight. Just closing issues. We already have less issues than other CMSs out there and other application frameworks, but it's a big focus of ours to stay ahead of that and not let them pile up over time. And right now, Look at that, 66 open pull requests for issues. And yeah, we, we're, we're gonna keep going on that. That's like issue number one. But issue number two is um, reaching stability for the packages that we just released in 2.0. So that means Postgres, that means Lexical, and that means Live Preview. Those three packages are gonna be receiving specific attention because we want them to leave beta and we want them to become stable as early as possible. We're really excited about what this kind of adapter-based pattern has allowed us to do because as you'll see later, I'm gonna be talking about some big things including the move to Next.js, but Postgres will be able to run in parallel. All that work that we do with Postgres is not gonna change or be affected at all with what we do with Next.js. It can just run right alongside of it. And that's a really exciting thing, but we want those packages to exit beta and become stable as fast as possible. So look out for that. We have um, some specific improvements that we're gonna be making across the board. For example, live preview, we're implementing um, optimizations for how we batch and retrieve relationships as they're updated from your front end, just kind of performance optimizations there. And then on Postgres, we're gonna be improving the control that you have over the way that relationships are handled inside of your database. So right now, as you probably know, um, everything is jammed into one payload relationships table for each collection, but we're gonna break that down and give you more control. So if you have a one-to-one -one relationship, you can have more of a um, expected table structure, lots of stuff like that, but that's first. Um, and then the thing I wanted to just briefly mention about our roadmap, Yes, it's all cleaned up, but one thing we've done is we've actually added help wanted tags to roadmap items that are relatively low in ambition and could serve as good ways to start contributing to payload. Like there, this is priority one, what I'm looking at here. This is our GitHub discussions and I'm scrolling through priority one. And you can see a lot of these are marked as help wanted. And if you go to priority two, more of them are marked as help wanted. And same with priority three. There's some interesting things here like conditional tabs. So we have uh, conditional logic, right? And that works on a field by field basis, but we could also extend it and use that on a tab by tab basis so that tabs automatically pop up based on conditions, stuff like that. Really cool stuff. Um, but you can take a look through here and if you're interested in contributing to payload, this is the spot to look. This is what we're uh, prioritizing and where we could especially use help. The things that we're most likely to merge and give attention to as PRs. But now let's talk about the big stuff. I think it's pretty revealing that we just opened up this roadmap discussion two weeks ago, but it's already got 43 upvotes and it's got a lot of action here. You can read through this roadmap item, but I think the big one that everyone expects at this point is that payload will be moving to Next.js. And I personally think that this is going to be an incredibly good move for us. This is gonna let us completely remove our requirement for Webpack aliases. We've done a proof of concept and we've got a utility that automatically parses the config down into only things that are safe to be run in the browser. So you don't need to worry about it ever again. 
This is gonna be a huge, massive move. And with that, you're gonna get server-side hot module reloading out of the box. So when you change your payload config, boom, your, your handlers, your endpoints, will automatically update. You don't have to have Nodemon anymore. It will just work seamlessly. The proof of concept that we've done is very promising. And outside of that, another big kind of benefit of Next.js is that right now we're maintaining a bunch of different um, templates. So deploy Next.js and payload with a custom server. Deploy Next.js serverless with the next payload package. We have our website template. We have our e-commerce template. We have our all kinds of stuff going on. But when we move to Next.js, all of this is going to get radically simpler. And the quality of these templates and boilerplates is going to skyrocket. And we're going to be able to focus more as a company. Really excited about that. And then we're also going to completely remove our requirement of supporting bundlers. So we just released Vite. You ask me, I think that was a mistake. Vite is great for simple projects that are not uh, isomorphic meaning that they don't have code shared between the server and the browser. But the move to Vite did not really fix any of our problems. It was a good exploration, and I know a lot of you wanted it, but with, pay, with Payload and Next.js, we're, just gonna, we're not even going to have to support that. We're going to just use Next.js to be our compiler. And I've done some early testing with TurboPack as well, and we are close to getting TurboPack working already as well, which is very exciting. And that's going to be a huge DX improvement. Um, I also saw that Next.js and Vercel just announced some improvements to cold starts, which is, it's got my interest, I'll tell you that. Um, anyways, so I think this is gonna be huge. And the way that we're gonna do this is we are going to assemble kind of a skunkworks team. And what that means back in the uh, Cold War era, um, Lockheed Martin had like a group of very talented engineers that were basically assigned to a secret project and they worked away from all of the bureaucracy and the red tape and everything else. They just worked in this little tiny unit against a specific goal very quickly and very effectively. And so that's how I envision this Next.js move to go. We're gonna have a couple engineers, probably Jake and Jared from the payload team that are gonna work on Next.js in a little, a little secret compartment and they're gonna push that forward. But the rest of the payload team is gonna continue focusing on the issues and the stability and the ecosystem and our other roadmap items. But when we get close to releasing Next.js, there will be breaking changes with this. And one thing we learned from our 2.0 release is that we're not just gonna throw out 3.0, instead, we're gonna throw out 3.0 beta and we're gonna let it cook for months. As soon as possible, as soon as we have a working proof of concept for Next.js, we're gonna do a 3.0 beta. That's gonna be on another branch. And we're gonna support both 2.0 and 3.0 beta. 3.0 beta on Next.js is gonna cook for months probably two months. And it could come relatively quickly. Like the work involved is not that crazy, but what we want from our community, especially those of you that understand how payload works, we want you to get into that 3.0 beta, let us know what you think and help us fine tune and improve so that before we release it, it's golden. It's good, it's stable, you can trust it. It's been put through the ringer. It's gonna be a good, uh, a good way to go about this, I think. And um, just on that note, like, I just want to thank everyone for being so diligent about opening issues and helping us understand um, where we need to shine emphasis on, and especially with like the Postgres relationships thing. We've been getting a lot of really great feedback and a lot of really insightful thinking, and um, we want that for the next JS move as well. So that's going to be huge. Um, the next thing would be features. So specifically, we have a lot of features on our roadmap. I'm not gonna go through all of them today, but if you wanna see all of these features are outlined on our roadmap as priority one, two, and three, I'm gonna cover a couple big ones right now. And the first one is bulk upload. This is something that we've actually got mostly done already, but multiple uploads at the same time, basically just if you got 10 files to upload, drag and drop them onto payload and then they all upload. This is mostly done. This will be coming soon, probably within the next month or so. And that's gonna be huge, but pretty self-explanatory on that one. The next one is folder view. And I don't even know where this is. Let me see, uh, folder view, yeah. So we're gonna build a full folder system for our list view. So you can manage not only media and uploads, but any type of document you can assign to folder structures. And then there will be an alternative 
view inside of payload for either like the table view like you have now or a full folder view and that will be coming soon as well the next thing is list filters basically a lot of times in payload you might have pretty big collections that have lots of different querying potential you might want to see like show me all show me all pages that are related to this site or like if you're doing multi-tenancy for example or something like that and you want to save filters for reuse we're going to allow you to define filters on both like the collection basis so you can define them statically in code like a saved filter or you could save your own filters as a user where we will use user preferences and then save these filters on a user by user basis and then you can like build your own and just kind of over time save them uh, so when you come back to the ui you can just reference them quickly it's gonna be huge it's gonna be a good one the next one um i've got it on our little sidebar over here as localization but there is actually a lot of different localization improvements that we're going to be making the first one is visually differentiating localized fields from non-localized fields just a ui thing the next one is, um, I'm actually going to skip that one because there's a lot there, but uh, let's see what else we have. Mm -hmm. Publishing individual locales. This one's almost done as, as well, but you're going to be able to basically, like right now Payload has drafts in the published document, but the draft includes many locales. And say you were working on Spanish and you only wanted to publish the changes to the Spanish locale. Let's say we had that one done and it's beautiful you'll be able to say, okay, publish the Spanish locale only. And then it would copy that and put it um, onto the published document. So this is gonna be great. Uh, we also have a way to edit multiple locales as, at once on the roadmap. And these things are all priority ones. So you'll be able to see like, here's the English quote, here's the uh, Spanish quote, and here's the German quote. You'll be able to see them next to each other, easily copy data back and forth and all kinds of stuff like that. So lots of interesting localization improvements coming as priority one. And then the last, um, another big one is WebSockets. So we're going to build a full WebSocket API, and you're going to be able to subscribe to updates on a document basis or on a um, collection basis. And this is going to be huge. This is going to open the door to lots of things in the future, like multiplayer editing. And we're going to try to build it in a very isolated, compartmentalized way, just like the database adapters, where you can install it, and then bam, it's going to work. And this is going to open up the door for real-time communication between payload and your front ends. This is priority one as well. And then the last thing is um, SQLite. We are going to add SQLite support. Let's see, where is that? Let me just pull that up. Because we already are using Drizzle, adding additional relationships or relational database support is very easy. And this one, we marked it as size medium, but the work is mostly done already. And I think it could even be arguably size small. But there's not a lot of work to add additional database support. We also want to do MySQL, but SQLite is going to be the next one. So that's coming as priority one as well. I'm going to just change that, priority one. Cool. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. If you want to take a look at our roadmap more closely, there are a lot of things that I did not mention here. Like, for example, building a way to lock documents while someone else is editing it allowing for custom table names in Postgres so you can customize the names that we generate for you. More control over the relationships in Postgres here. I'd like to say if you guys can log in and upvote your discussions that are most relevant to you, like what you want to see us work on first, that's kind of how we prioritize here. So if something is super important to you, give it an upvote, give it an emoji on the, on the, the guy here, go and Give yourself, like, the knife emoji is the one I like to use. Oh, you can't. Damn. Um, well, yeah. Let us know what you want us to work on first, and we will prioritize it accordingly. But lots of big things. I'm most excited for Next.js, and I think it's going to blow the doors off. Um, thank you. I will be around, and let me know if you have any questions in our Discord. Goodbye.